What you need to install the hitch are you know, some very simple hand tools, um, a flathead screwdriver, a standard wrench with 16 millimeter sockets, uh, some WD-40, torque wrench, uh, this guy in the middle there, weird set of looking pliers, that's to remove the rubber exhaust hangers so you can drop the exhaust down. Uh, you definitely want to do that to make it easier to thread the uh, hitch in through the exhaust area up to the, the frame rails. Um, I'll show you how that works in a minute. But uh, yeah, so I mean the, the set of hand tools are pretty simple. Other than that, you probably want a set of ramps and uh, that's it. So uh, let's look at how you install this. Neglected to add, you, you need one jack stand to uh, hold the exhaust once you've removed the rubber mounts. Okay, before you start installing the hitch, you need to take off two panels, uh, one from either side. They're held on by these little friction pins. Just get them out. There's a third one up higher by the suspension. Take those three out. And then it's just a matter of working it out. There are two like friction fittings that just slide over uh, a, a post. Uh, just rock those out, and you see there and there. Those were that's where those were. Um, but yeah, it's easy to take off, and that'll give you room to to put the hitch in. So. Okay, when I introduce the uh, set of tools you need talked about this thing. It's to remove these rubber hangers. And you know you can try and you know pull them off of plier regular pliers or all kinds of stuff but you might rip them or damage them. Um, I've heard of people taking hours to get these these off. Uh, if you just come up eh, don't blast myself in the face a little WD-40 Get some lubrication in there. Open these up, put the fork behind, and get the bar, centled, bar <laughs> centered on the pin there. And then just give it a little squeeze, kind of holding up the exhaust as you go. There you go. It comes right off. It can't be easier. Um, like I said, just get yourself a pair of those pliers. Uh, definitely worth the uh, expense. Okay. Once you have the exhaust lowered, it's going to be tough to show you because there's not a lot of room here. But once you've lowered the exhaust, you can go ahead and thread the hitch bar in. This side, obviously, there's nothing in the way. It's over on the exhaust side, where you got to take the bar up over the exhaust and to that rail. Um, it is, you know, uh, the hardest part of the install, obviously, is lifting this up and getting it aligned with the holes unless you have a helper. I did it by myself and what I did is just you know basically like you're doing a bench press had the trailer hitch over my chest lifted it up from the middle and threaded it in and then uh, lightly rested the other end on top of the exhaust not putting the weight on there because I didn't want to worry about causing the exhaust to bend, fall, or otherwise get damaged, um, but just lightly rest it up on top of the exhaust to help stabilize it, and then worked my way over and hand threaded the first bolt back in here, and once that was a few turns in, I could give the weight on the release the weight onto that bolt and then do the same thing on the other side. Um, one thing I should mention before you even start to put the hitch up it would be a good idea to blast the holes with WD-40 and then run the bolts into the holes without the hitch obviously just to make sure that any paint 
globs or uh, undercoating or whatever that might obstruct the threads is out of the way so you can hand tighten these bolts as you need to. Um, so again, yeah, run the bolts in, clear the threads, and then once you put this up, you can hand thread the, the bolt here and then for whatever reason they don't have a bolt on this side but there are two bolts on this side go over here oh. uh. <laughs> apologies if this isn't coming out well but there's uh, two bolts maybe you can see that I can't see the viewfinder now um, one there one over here and once you finger tighten those up then the hitch is pretty well supported um, and what I did was run those up almost tight so it was almost stuck against the frame and while I did that I was watching in the sides uh, uh, sorry uh, while I did that I was watching the side over here making, looking, waiting for the uh, side holes to line up with the threads uh, shifting the hitch forward and backwards until they lined up and once they were in the middle of the the holes I went ahead and tightened up the f upward facing bolts all the way and then that made it real easy to thread in those side bolts and uh, that's that now let's go ahead and uh, finish tightening them up with the torque wrench uh, and we'll be ready to put everything back together all right, I did mention a torque wrench is needed. Um, you know, some of you might want to just bolt it on without using a torque wrench. I'd highly recommend against that. You know, a trailer hitch has a lot of dynamic load on it. Your bolts are really all that's keeping it connected, and uh, you don't want to over tighten it, stretch the bolt, and have it fail when you hit a bump with the trailer hooked up or something. So, um, if you can beg, borrow steel. Uh, uh, a torque wrench I would recommend it uh, this is an older one you know it just needs to be at 42 pounds I'm at 20 just keep cranking this up now it's at 30 42 and that's all there's to it and then you just tighten it up until it clicks and you're good to go so let's do that so let's get this tightened up Okay, that's it. You hear that click like that? It's tight. Uh, go do all the rest of them and we'll get back to the next steps. All right, now we're gonna put this back into the rubber mount. Start by just shooting a little WD-40 in there. Should probably still lubed up enough from when I took it off, but why stop and just like that it's hung again so that same thing a little lubrication lift the exhaust and push it on and it's easy All right, now we're going to install the trailer light kit, and the first part of that is to remove the tail lights so we can get at the connectors. And to do that, you gotta pry these two little bitty notches in there. And once you have those up, you can move the plastic out from behind the tail light, maybe. This going, let's just walk this down. There we go. There, a few uh, pegs, and we'll clip top and bottom. It's a little bit of work, but if you're careful, you can get it out. All right, 
Now I need a Phillips screwdriver and we'll get to work. Giving it some steady pressure. There's a little clip that goes over that and this little metal pin goes into here. And now I have access to the wiring and I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this for a minute. And I'll go do the other side and then we'll come back to this. The adapter harness I'm going to use is the Kurt 56277 and it comes with a uh, adapter module that has these little basically Y adapters that hook in between the existing factory wiring and the harness a little logic box and then comes out with a standard four wire connection if you can see that um, also comes with a long piece of wire because you have to run a power connection off the battery and a fuse and various zip ties and uh, connectors to use to hook it up. So let's look at how we actually install it. So hooking the harness up is going to be easy. We just hook it up to there and into the tail light. But what we need to do is fish the wire up from way down there. Um, you can see light, there is a passage way down. Uh, when you have these side pieces taken off that you had to take off for the trailer hitch. So I'll fish those through real quick and then start hooking it up. I use the black wire that you need to run to the front of the car uh, as a snake I just dropped it down and I've connected it to the ends that need to be pulled up and out at the factory taillight area. So let's go ahead and pull it on up. Alright, so now that we have that done, we can get to work on the rest of the installation. So I've run one wire from that down below, around and back up to here, and went ahead and hooked that into the factory harness. This little connection is just long enough to make it from one side to the other. Um, so yeah, the uh, could have been. Could have been, it would have been nice to have just a little extra wire. Um, the controller box is going to hang right about in here. Um, if I can, I'm going to get it stuck in there or secured somehow. But just because of the length of the those yellow, red, brown wires, it's not going to reach all the way down. Um, and you know, keeping it up inside of there a little bit is probably better for weather protection. So. Uh, but what we're left with is we have to hook this ring up as a ground and there's really no ground point in here. Everything or there's a screw or anything is going into plastic and so uh, I'm going to have to put a little, drill a little hole and they give you a, a ground screw. You just have to drill a 3 32nd hole and then you can attach it, so we'll do that now. Nothing like drilling into a brand new vehicle, but hey. Um, I'm pick a spot that's a little lower than the light housing. And sort of flat. A little starter mark there.
have my hole. I'll just thread this in. Tuck the wire down in there a little bit. And that screw that they give you is self-tapping, so that's kind of nice. This wire out of the way. Alright, now I should have a ground and we can continue on. This is the lead for power and so I'm going to go ahead and connect up to the big long wire that they give us and get that run. So let's do that next. Okay, so I've run the main wire down behind the bumper cover and uh, this is the two wires we need to join. Uh, strip them off a little bit. And uh, I guess I should have done this first but put some shrink tubing over this so we can make it nice later. wire on that. Alright. It's got a decent twist on them. And I have an old soldering gun. It is this is heavy wire. And it is cold out today, so I'm going to need a lot of heat to get this done. Alright, I think we got about as much as we're going to get with that. Let's see if I can get the shrink tube over it. I can just use the heat from this. Should be able to shrink that down. Alright. Would have been a little quicker with the lighter, but I'll have one handy. Okay, with the power wire ground all taken care of, nothing left to do but click it together and re reinstall everything. Now, the question will be how well this fits behind there. Looks like there's plenty of room where we can kind of fold this together. Maybe get that. Yeah. So it seems to fit fairly well. Just need to put the screws back in. Voila. Okay, so I'm not going to put this other plastic piece back in until I get a chance to test it out, but I'm going to install the other side, and I'm going to run the wire underneath the car, and when I get to the battery, we'll continue. Okay, so I got the wire run underneath the car. Um, if you're interested, I ran it along the brake lines, uh, put some wire loom around it, and brought it up along the firewall and now I need to attach the fuse which I already installed the 10 amp fuse in there uh, again this comes with the kit so um, let's get that going Already got some shrink wrap 
on the uh, the wire there so I can seal it up when it's done. Alright, so now we have that part of the connection all done. Let's get the rest of this into the loom. And put a couple wraps at the end just to secure the loom. Wraps of tape that is. Alright. Now just gonna run this other, underneath the air box and get it over to the other side. And then I'm going to drill a small hole in this back side of the box and run this up and attach it up here. Now, the kit comes with a nice hoop connector with, you know, a plastic sleeve, crimp sleeve. Um, I'm going to just, again, use some solder to really attack that, or attach it, rather. Um, get a little bit more wire exposed. Crimp it to start with and then flow some solder over it. Alright, that's got that. Good strong connection there. So I got this connected now. I was going to just use this stud right here to hook this onto. It's part of the terminal mechanism, but I got to looking at it and I'm not so sure if I take that nut off if it won't all fall apart. So um, I'm actually going to use this one over here which may be better anyway. It's on the other side of a, of a fuse right there and uh, so we'll go with that one instead. That way this is double fused. See, since we're not doing that, we've got a little extra wire here. Back outside. And I dropped them nut. So let me go find that. Alright, I got lucky and didn't didn't get caught up in the all the undercarriage stuff, so let's get that screwed on before I lose it again. 
And I'm going to make sure to bring this over here so there's no chance that the wire or anything could bridge those two because that would defeat the purpose of the fuse. So. Good. I'm going to come back and put a little sealant in there to protect that hole. But now we have our fused power line all the way back, and we should be done. Nothing left now but to test it out and finish tying up the wires in the back. All right, since I haven't really tied up that four wire yet. I have plenty of extra to reach it out and uh, bring my trailer up next to the car so I can see if we uh, have lights or not. So I'll turn the lights on. Yep. And then, uh, yep, so you got the lights there. Yeah, that turn signal works. Yeah, that turn signal works. Brakes. Yep. So it looks like it all works. And that was a couple hours work, it's <laughs> easy, uh, especially since I was trying to get camera angles and all that. So now I just got to secure this wire up and we will be all, all set. Now it's time to put the plastic panels back in, just slide them up, get this leading edge up inside, the splash, vent, the splash guard. And then line up the friction pin parts, if I can, there we go, and once, once that's done, it's just a matter of pushing, oops, pushing these little pins back in. And you're done. Last thing I have to do is put this plastic cover back in. All you're doing is trying to get these three tabs into the respective slots. You can kind of line this one up with that big notch right away. And you just push it in. Make sure it gets sealed in, or sealed in. It slips behind this little lip on the light to hold it in. And that's that go on a lot easier and they come off like most things. So that is how you install everything. Alright, we're all done. Let's see how it looks. All pretty much hidden. It's a nice hitch in terms of how it looks. Kind of give you a demo here. You can see this. Um, I mentioned before how it locks in. Unlock this. It's a little snug going in, but uh, you can see, you know, if you had this at the pin in, it would still rattle around like this. But once you lock it up, yeah, I'm shaking back and forth on it pretty good. No more rattle, so it's kind of a neat thing um, when I'm using a. Uh, Little, just a little cargo carrier tray back here. It'll make it a little more stable and less noisy, so that'll be pretty cool. Um, but uh, overall, I'm really happy with it. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be glad to answer them in the comments. The trailer wire, I just rigged it so there's enough I can tuck, you know, it's tucked up under the bumper when I don't need it. And when I want to tow something, I can just pull that out. So, anyway, hopefully you uh, enjoyed this and hopefully it was helpful. And like I said, if you have any questions, leave a comment and I will get back to you. Thanks.